What's up, people? It's time to go. I've been trying to push the button for 30 seconds, and she's like, that's nope. not time. Not time. It's not time. And <laughs> I don't know why we have to start right at 12. Well, because some of our dear friends wait for the 12 o'clock hour to jump on. Of course, they're not doing it right now. Where are y'all at? Uh, There's one. Well, uh, <laughs> Good morning, Maria. Dear Jen. dear friends, sometimes my watch might be a little early. I'm going to push the button early and y'all going to be like, what happened? <laughs> What's up, people? What's happening? What's going on? Our normal crew is logging in. What's up, Graham? I saw some cool stuff in Chicago. I saw some cool stuff in your group this weekend. So nice to see that. Sarah is on. What's up, Sarah? I hear you hung out with this lady for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Had some fun in Louisiana. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. What's up, Jeff? I see Canada's in. What's up, Denise? How are you? Good morning, everyone. Michigan is coming in. Alabama's coming in. J-Lo is Damn here. Girl. I hope you guys love the interview with J-Lo and her mother. That was pretty fun doing that with them. What's up, Cheryl? Arkansas is here. Nice. Love. Love seeing that. Joe, Graham, all right. What's up, guys? Good morning to all of y'all. That's the other Lynette in my life. The other Lynette. Yeah, Lynette <laughs> Young from Canada. What's up, Canada? Uh, so, here we go, guys. I think this is our first Monday in May. It is. It's our first Monday in May. So, another month has rolled by. That means... Another virtual workshop is either on the horizon or just happened. It just happened. If you missed it, it just happened. The recordings are in our YouTube channel, and I'm sure they'll be up at Team True Blue. You got something to say? I hear you. I hear you like... No. Oh. What's up, people? <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> What's going on? Dead take much. Dead, dead air. Dead air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Good. I'm glad you guys enjoyed having Lynette out there. The Canadian hair care launch is, it is as it's finished, right? I don't think, I don't know if there's any more stops. Maybe there's some more stops. Mississippi's in the house. Yeah. Ireland launched last week. It was a, it was a busy week. Yeah. I mean, you launched a country and it's like, Oh, yeah, oh, we launched another country. <laughs> just just launched another country. That's all we did. Turned in. Oh, wait. I know. I know since last Monday what happened. You guys, if you're not following the stock or our revenues, they we had a new earnings report put out and it was absolutely fire. Absolute fire. Massive growth in the in the Americas. Even more growth in Asia, and distributor numbers are up, customer numbers are up, and so I'm not a stock analyst, but I'm just telling you that there are some really, really good things happening at this company, and I think it's so awesome that all these other companies that are out there um, don't report earnings the way we do because they don't have to, right? That's one thing. And the fact that we have to, there is upside, there is downside, but the upside to that is when you're looking for business partners uh, that are truly serious about teaming up or partnering, um, it's a whole different conversation when you're publicly traded. In fact, I don't know if it was Ray Higdon or if it was Eric Worre, but uh, their basic the concept behind working with a publicly traded com uh, company, the conversation was, um, it's one thing to support a friend that's selling a product. But if you're gonna join a business, like if you're gonna do a business where you're investing the most precious commodity you have is your time, don't join one just because your friend is there. Like if you're gonna be successful in a network marketing opportunity, it needs to have all the components for your long-term success, right? And one of those components that is a big part of why you should join a company or not is the company itself. We know product, timing, trends, all that stuff, comp plan, one of them is the company. And with us, you get to see who we are. You get to see um, the transparency. And right now, guys, I'm telling you, you should be beating that drum with your friends that are gonna join you in this business that you are joining a publicly traded company that is rocking and rolling right now. You have to love that post. There was a, a post last week somebody 
put on Facebook, um, a, a person that posted it has had tremendous success in the network marketing arena. You and want me to say his name? <laughs> I didn't know if I should or not. Oh, well, that's why I asked. It yeah, doesn't no. matter. The point He's a multi, multi millionaire from network marketing, has enrolled personally thousands of distributors direct to himself. In fact, he is known as the enrollment guru. Um, and so we don't need to say his name, but he's a big deal in network marketing. So he, he had a post last week giving love to Life Vantage because he has stuck well, with his, Life Vantage. His, Not his three biggest holdings. So right. A holding is, you know, the people you've invested with his three largest holdings. So the three companies that he has the most amount of his money invested in. You guys ready for this? Apple, Shopify, LifeVantage. Y'all know the first two. Y'all know all three. Your friends know the first two. Okay. And the picture, I think it was a picture of a Ferrari and maybe a Bentley or a Ferrari and a Rolls Royce or there was definitely a Ferrari in the picture in the garage. And uh, this guy is actually in another network marketing company. So what's that say? It says that what we have is absolute gold and you guys should be running like your hair is on fire because... This company is on fire. And um, if you can't get excited, no one's gonna get excited for you or with you. Like, you've gotta get excited, guys. And hopefully you're seeing what's going on. Hopefully you guys are feeling it. I know you guys are because y'all had a great month. The team, guys, last month, we had a massive successful month last month. It, April was really awesome. It was a great month for us as a team. I know the red light, green light thing has been a really fun challenge personally for all of you. So kudos to all of you who are working to get your lights green. If, you're green, if your lights were green, then high five to all of you, virtual high fives. If you had a green light, drop in the comments. Give us a green heart or give us some high fives down in the comments. If you didn't, it's not the end of the world. It just means that you have to take to heart core value number one, which is our core value for this week. That's exactly what I was thinking about. It's about being Shocker. intentional Shocker. and purposeful. And you guys, what I loved about the green light thing is a lot of you guys became very intentional in making sure that you went green, right? Did, for those of you who, who kind of played along with that, didn't you notice like that you were putting forth extra effort to ensure that you were green at month end? And that's what core value number one is all about. It's being intentional and purposeful. And what happens when you do that is you get the results that you're looking for. So you have to allow that to be your, your line of thinking in all areas of this business. Every, like we're at the beginning of a month. You have to be intentional about mapping out this month. We're heading into summer. You need to start looking at your summer and going, okay, what plan of action am I putting in place? Because my kids are gonna be home all summer. I'm gonna have to divide my time potentially. We've got travel. Like you have to start mapping that out so that you're able to stay green all through the summer and you're able to grow your business because it's those daily decisions that lead to the long lasting results that we all wanna have. And, and you have to plan that in advance. You don't just wake up and see how things roll out. You don't win by doing that. So it requires being intentional. And so kudos to you guys who, who were very intentional and purposeful about going green. I think it's funny when we do these calls because we've done, we call this a call because we did a call on Sunday night forever, six and a half years straight, every Sunday night. Super Bowl Sunday, all the Sundays, we did them. Um, and so we still call this a call. I think it's funny where Lynette and I's mindset always tends to go when we're talking to the team. And it's towards the serious business-minded people. Like our message is always towards those people, you guys, most of you out there that are on here in the middle of a Monday morning are serious about your business because we want you guys to have what's available. Not just what we've had, but what's available to you. And I know there's a lot of you here, you just heard Lynette say, must, must do this, must do that, must, and that's why I'm bringing this out, because <laughs> as I'm hearing her say, you must do this and you must do that, 
Um, there, well, didn't I follow it with if you want the results? Maybe. I just heard must. Right? I just heard must. Just but saying. she's right that <laughs> if you want results, and I think that's what you guys want. I think you want results. There's some of you that are going to listen to this that um, you want results, but maybe what you want is just a few hundred bucks a month. Or you want to help some people get healthy, and that's awesome. That is super awesome. And uh, many of the tools that we have set up at teamtrueblue.org, crazyyellowpill.com, were designed for you. They were designed for the people who just want to share this with a few folks, maybe get their products free. Um, so those, we're conscious of that. But our mindset has always been from the very beginning, and I guess is always going to be, to help people achieve what's possible at Life Advantage. I'm not even gonna say what we've achieved because it doesn't matter what we've achieved for you guys. It's, it's, uh, it's for some of you, you guys know the story, right? We've been Master Pro 10s for five years now. And so um, we want you guys, and the reason we continue to do these type calls and the trainings and the virtual workshops, we want you guys to maximize uh, what's available to you. And so, Love it, hate it, I don't know. I guess our mindset and our messages are always gonna be steered in the direction of what you need to hear, maybe not what you wanna hear well, to go and, out and, and crush I think this it, thing. It just boils down to us really, really having a strong desire for helping people achieve what they wanna achieve and, and the, the realistic side of making that happen. So, you know, it, if you want a little, you get a little. If you want a lot, it takes more effort and, and that's at the end of the day. Yeah, it's a good point because I think sometimes people who are not successful in this business paint a picture that's too simple or too easy. And then when people do this with them and it gets hard, which not if, when it gets hard, they quit yeah. because they thought it was going to be easy. And I can promise you, if you're going to make a few thousand dollars a month, write this in your notes if you've never heard this. Your first thousand dollars of residual income, not income from Life Vantage, because smart start money is not residual. If you go sign up a couple platinum packs, you're gonna make 800 bucks, right? Almost a thousand bucks, but that's not residual. Your first one thousand dollars residual income. So the getting from zero to a thousand dollars of monthly residual income will be the hardest thousand dollars you'll ever make. Getting to a thousand dollars of residual income a month is harder than getting to thirty thousand, forty thousand, or fifty thousand dollars a month. I can promise you that. Earning fifty thousand dollars a month residually is easier than earning your first thousand because that first thousand is where you go through all of the invites, all of the rejection, all of the learning curve, all of the events you have to invest in, all of the personal development. Um, and so for those that are out there that are, haven't got your first thousand, or maybe some of you out there are close to your first thousand, it is what it is. That first thousand is the hardest. And after that, the, it starts to become a little bit simpler, a little bit easier for you. And so um, anyway, we're going to talk today about a subject that I think you guys are going to appreciate. Lynette and I got in here and did a little brainstorming for y'all this morning. And I know and... Lynette's the same way. When we first started this business with Life Vantage, besides being busy like all of you, we felt like to some degree we were chasing people a little bit. And we had to ask a bunch of questions and figure out what we needed to do to stop chasing people. So if you've been chasing people, drop us some running emojis down there <laughs> in the comments. If you feel like you're chasing or you feel like you did chase, Drop us some running emojis down there because I think we all chased people at some point. So That's not a good feeling either. It's horrible. Like it's a no, horrible feeling. None of us like that feeling of chasing after somebody or like our friends are avoiding us. Like, And I think that we've all been through it. And some of you may be going through it right now. But sometimes it's simple things that we can do that will avoid us from having those feelings. Because ultimately, you guys, this is a business. You have to follow up. If you're not following up, you're not gonna sick, you're not gonna get the results you're looking for. Because what we've learned is it takes multiple touches for someone to make a decision. It's very rare that someone will get this information the first time 
and be ready to go with it. Like it usually takes multiple touches. So how do you avoid that feeling of chasing after someone? And you do it by setting the tone from the very beginning. When you expose this to somebody, you anticipate that they're not gonna be ready to go right then, right? So you immediately are setting up the follow-up. So there's a couple ways that it can be done. I think Brandon's gonna talk to you a little bit about having a call to action at the end of whatever it is, the phone conversation, the three-way call, the, the presentation, whatever it is. But the other thing is actually setting up for that time that you're gonna follow up. So if the call to action is that you're inviting them to a next meeting, then the next meeting is that follow-up, right? But if maybe they just wanted to do a little bit more research before they talk to you again and you've given them the means to do that, then you set the time that you're gonna to touch back with them. Say, great, I know you wanna kinda of look over that information. Um, so what do you think? Two, three days, today's Monday, you think by Thursday you'll have had a chance to have done that? Yeah, yeah, I, I should I should be able to by Thursday. Great. Okay. Well, I'm gonna reach out to you on Thursday. Once you've looked at that, looked at that over, what's better for you, morning or afternoon? And giving somebody two options, you guys, really, what happens what happens is that they're gonna pick one or they're gonna say, no, neither of those work. This is better. Or when you say, hey, you know. Will you, will you have had a chance to look at it by say Wednesday or Thursday? They may say, oh no, actually we're leaving town tomorrow. I'm not gonna get to look at it all week. So you better touch back with me next Monday. By that time, I will have had a chance to look at it. They're telling you when you can follow up. So now, instead of you just thinking, okay, it's been a couple days, maybe today's a good day to call them and you call them and they don't answer because they're out of town and you're going, are they avoiding me? What's what's going on? I don't, should I call them again? Should I wait till tomorrow? I, it's because you didn't specify specifically when was going to work for them. And then when you follow up, you follow up when you say you're going to follow up. If they don't answer, no problem. Leave a message. Hey, this is when if you're texting or voicemail, whatever, however you communicate with your friend, messenger, however it is. Um, hey, this is when we talked about me touching base with you, so I'm, I'm doing that. So I'll just maybe message me back if there's a better time, but you do your part, right? And if that does somehow turn in to a no response, let me give you a little idea of something to do. Because here's what I found. If you don't ask specifically, you don't get a specific answer. So I've had that feeling before where I'm like, okay, they're not responding to my text. They're not responding to my phone calls. They're not answering when I reach out. Why not do this? Especially if this is a good friend, right? Because you want to keep them as a good friend. Why not reach out to them and say, hey, listen, I'm doing Life Vantage as a business. Um, I told you I was going to follow up. So if I don't follow up, I'm a loser. If I keep calling you, I'm a bugger and frankly, I don't want to be a loser or a bugger. So can you just let me know where you're at so we can go back to being friends? Don't you love that you guys? Because doesn't it just put it out there? Because they're either going to respond and go, ah, I didn't realize I was making you feel like that. I'm sorry. I know I've just been busy. I've had so much on my plate or they're going to respond and go, leave me alone. I don't want to hear about that again. And you're going to go, cool. Now I know we can go back to being friends. And there's none of that awkwardness, right? So just ask if you if you're having that feeling with somebody, do it. Come on, what's the worst that can happen? They don't answer your call. They're not answering it anyway. <laughs> so just a little food for thought for you. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. And um, I love uh, what's the dude over in uh, the UK guy, Fraser Brooks. Uh, he has a phrase when you're following up, uh, like setting up that three-way call. Once you set it up, like they've picked the time, just as Lynette said, the line he uses is, does that sound fair? Yeah. And right. um, it's awesome. Like if someone gives you a time and they've given you time and you repeat, so if I call you back at nine o'clock, we'll better do this. Does that sound fair? And they agree to it, then more than likely they're gonna do what they say they're going to do, right? Because if not, they are the loser, not you, <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, anyway, we just wanted to put that out there for you guys on that side. Now, 
another way that you can stop chasing people is by, um, let me see, I want to make sure I say this in a way that doesn't get taken. Once you start someone down this path, they either enroll or they're going to die. One of the two. Like, they never come off of your database, guys. Okay, you can't let them off the hook, right? Like, once you've started down this road with them, you have to keep leading them to the next thing, right? And even if they say no, like, one, it, maybe you finally get enough information and they're not avoiding you. They just say, look, it's not for me. It's just no for now, right? So you need to know what to do with that, right? It's, believe me, we've got people that are elite distributors. In our team, you would know them. They joined us 18 months after we rolled this out to them. I've got a guy that was number one on my database. Number one guy when we signed up in my old blueprint, the number one guy signed up six years after I invited him the first time, okay? So people are watching, um, but one way to stop chasing people is to know where to lead them next. And so when you're doing presentations, whether it's on a webinar, home meeting, one-on-ones, whatever that presentation looks like, the vast majority of the time, they're not signing up right then, okay? I don't know what the percentage is for you, you know, but I bet it's, I, I know it's less than 30% of the guests that show up at your meeting sign up right there at that event, if that's their first exposure, right? We know that it's normally fourth, fifth, sixth touch before they're signing up. My point is this, when you are having a, presentation, webinar, home meeting, and you go to the end. So many times I've seen people close a meeting, close a presentation, and it's just like, okay, we're done. Thanks for coming. And that is terrible. It is absolutely terrible. You, you spend all this time getting someone to a meeting or getting them in front of a webinar, and you just killed the momentum. Like you finally were getting some momentum, and you killed it, right? How do you not kill it? By always having something for them to plug into next. So it look for a presentation, home meeting, it looks like this. As you're closing, there's a few steps, right? And those steps could be simple as this. If you're going to share this information, what you heard tonight, if you're going to share this information with anyone, you might as well get an ID number with us so that we know, we, so that we can send you a check. Because if those people you share this with want the product or want to join us in the business, it, you can earn a commission. You cannot earn a commission without an ID number. So number one, get an ID number. Number two, after you have that ID number tonight, we'll give you the link to the video that enabled us to build this business. You will get the same link that we used to build this business. We and you. Previously, you probably just showed them the income earning statement, or you previously just talked about the business, or you previously just told them what rank you were, okay? And, and you should be saying, guys, all we did was invite people to information, we showed them this video, we got their questions answered, right? And so you say, just get an ID number, we'll give you the link to the video, and then here's the, here's the call to action, guys. This is the point I want you to remember. Invite them to the next meeting that's happening that night in two nights of the next week. So when Lynette and I were building this business, we obviously were doing a lot of one-on-ones, but one of our standards was a Tuesday night meeting. It was a live meeting. Okay, If you can do live meetings, I think that's great. If that's not your style, that's okay, but you still have to do meetings. It could be virtual. It could be on Zoom. It could be on Facebook. And you need to know when the next meeting is to continue the momentum. So if it's Monday and you're doing a, a Monday Zoom or a Monday Facebook watch party or whatever, tell them, get an ID number. We'll give you the link, okay? I'll, I'll drop the link in, in messages. And then one week from tonight, after you show people this video, bring them right back here to this event and we'll get their questions answered. That's it. Get an ID number, show the video, bring them back to this meeting, okay? That's how you create momentum, guys, because people in the audience will go, oh, well, I can do that. I can show this video to people, and when they have questions, I can point them back to this event because that's it. 
And then once you get one person to join you in that, now there's two of you and two people inviting and showing the video all week. We'll get more people to the meeting. Guys, within a few months, I think our first meeting, you know, we had like a, a dozen people. Within a few months of that process, because we con committed to the consistent meetings, we had fire marshals showing up, shutting the meeting down because there were too many people in the meeting because people knew what to do. They knew to get an ID number and they knew to show the video and they knew to bring people back to the next meeting. So that's a call to action that will allow you to stop chasing. You don't have to call them back and say, hey, do you want to come to this meeting? Or hey, there is a meeting. They already know. They already know there's a meeting. You're not chasing your new distributors. How many of you guys have signed people up and they never do anything? It's everybody. It's because it was too complicated for them. Make it simple for them. Make it fun. And that starts with you being a leader and showing them what the next step is. And you can do that in every phase of your business. So just to reiterate, you guys, it's really just a matter of saying, listen, become a distributor. You'll get your ID number. That way the company knows who to send the check to. We'll share with you the same tool that we use, the video that we use in building this business, and then invite your guest right back here to this meeting so you can start growing your business by using us to help you do so. Yep. So just to kind of reiterate that, but... Um, yep. And so um, maybe you're building this business online. One thing I want to share with you guys, another call to action so you're not chasing. I know one of the things that's been so massively frustrating for me and Lynette in using social media for our business. Um, and by the way, once you become a network marketer, everything you do on social media should be business minded. Not every post, but everything you do post, you should be thinking, what are my friends thinking about? In other words, I think PJ said this so great in her video. Thank you, PJ, for that video that we use in the virtual workshop. If you didn't see the virtual workshop, we had PJ Adar in there. She crushed it. We had Ryan Goodwin doing a video just for our team. Crushed it. Um, she said, you know, don't tell the world on social media you're going to go vegan. And then a week later, you post a picture grilling, uh, grilling steaks on the grill. And I started laughing out loud because it's so true. I see it all the time on social media. You know, you put this business post um, out there and then days or weeks later, it's some silly stuff that, you know, you should never be posting. Every, think of social media as your resume, right? And so if you're going to get hired, do you want your boss or potential new boss to see Foolishness or silliness? No, you don't, right? And so if you're using social media to build this business, here's what you should be doing. You should build relationships, but at, all, at some point, it's time for a call to action. It is time to stop chasing. I mean, you could literally build relationships for years and never make any money on social media, okay? So something um, that I've heard from a seven-figure earner is this. Once you've built the relationship, okay, or I love this, when someone comments on one of your posts, okay, when someone comments on one of your posts, here's how you apply core value number one. Don't just comment back or, guys, first step, when they comment on yours, go to their profile picture. How do you do that? Touch their face. Touch their face, and now you go straight to the profile pic, that they use to post. Tell them how much you love that pic. You know why they're gonna love it? Because they love the pic, like it's their best picture of them and that's why it's up there. No one hates their profile picture. So if you post on their profile picture how much you love it, that's the first step. And then go and comment on two more posts. That's a total of three posts. You're being intentional now, okay? First, they commented on your page. They, there's something there they like. Go to their profile picture. Tell them you love it. Then go to two more posts in their, on their wall. Comment on their post. Okay. Watch the engagement. And as soon as they engage with you for the second time, right? because you've already built a relationship, I want you to think about using something like this. Would you be interested in looking at what I do if it doesn't conflict with what you do. That's just a suggestion, okay? That we've given you other suggestions before. 
This is a suggestion from a seven figure earner that is building, I think she said 60 to 70% of her business online, okay? And she's doing that within three to four weeks or as soon as they comment on her stuff. So if you get someone commenting on your stuff, go comment on their profile pic, pick two more uh, posts to comment on, and then when they re-engage with you, call to action, guys. It is time to figure out where they stand. Stop dancing around forever, and a call to action needs to Another happen. Another thing you can do if you're feeling like, well, how do I bring this up? Like, we've not really engaged about business too much. How do I bring it up? When you message them, just say, hey, I know this is a little out of the blue, but, and then the same thing, same thing. But so if, if you're looking for that transition, like how do I? Yeah, personalize it. Don't just, don't just hit them right. I mean, personalize it. It's like, hey, this has been so fun chatting with you. And in the process, I've been looking at your profile and we have so much in common. I know would this you is be interested? Yeah, would, would you, you be interested yeah. in looking at what I do if it didn't conflict with what you do? Question mark. Let's find out where they're at, guys. Don't you want to find out where people are at and stop chasing them? Because there's uh, billions of people on Facebook. You don't have to dance with the same ones, guys. Let's dance <laughs> with the people who want to dance. Find the good dancers. Let's go. We ain't got. Y'all did see the earnings report, right? Let's stop dancing and start running. Let's rock and roll, guys. Let's do this thing. So we just thought we would give you a little training today on how to stop chasing people and get people to join you and run. Um, there takes some skills to do that. We know that we're leading a massive team of people with all different interests and, and come from all different walks of life, but that is one common thing for all of us. We don't wanna chase people. We don't wanna do that. We wanna have fun with this, and you can have fun with it if you're just being real and authentic and, and finding the people who wanna run. I saw some people on here, like I'm looking for my runners. And uh, side note, another call, not this one. You wanna get people to run in your organization? You want people to run like you're running? There's one way to do it. Get them to events, period. You want someone to run? Get them to events. Events make people run. Or uh, massive failure in their life gets people to run. It's either rock bottom, the, the saying is breakdowns create breakthroughs, right? Rock bottom created more success than anything else, right? But you don't have to wait for that. You can also take someone whose life is not on rock bottom, get them to an event, and let the event light them on fire. So I would suggest you guys get people to Kansas City. What do you think? I'd say it's a good idea. Think that's a good, I think that's a good idea if you want runners. No brainer. <laughs> so that's it, guys. Another Monday has happened. I can't believe another workshop has happened. Those workshops seem like they're happening every week. Kudos to all of you guys who did live workshops. That is the ticket. Yep. That's an event. Like if, if you don't want to wait to Kansas City, you might want to do a virtual workshop in four weeks from now, the first week of June. So just saying. Anyway, it's been a good time with you guys. What's up, peeps? Tag your teams in this. If you got on this thing halfway, you missed a lot of good stuff missed at the halfway. beginning. Go back, watch <laughs> the other stuff. See ya. See you guys.